Welcome back to the Observatory. It's Kyle from Big Eye. Today we're being joined by Caitlin Colgrove, founder of Hex. Caitlin, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Well, Caitlin, maybe what we can start with is pretty obvious. Uh, what is Hex and uh, especially what's this focus recently on knowledge instead of just analytics? Yeah, so that's that's a really good question. Um, Hex is a platform for collaborative analytics and data science. Uh, with it, you can connect to your data, you can analyze it with Python, SQL, or R, sort of all in one place, and then build, share, and sort of manage beautiful reports, applications on top of that analysis. And you can do this kind of end-to-end -end all inside of Hex. And for your point about knowledge, uh, at Hex from the very start, we were really kind of maniacally focused on helping analysts drive value at their organizations. And the value that they create in, in inside of their companies is actually this the idea of knowledge. It's not just sort of a, an app. An app is not is not useful really. What you're looking for is like to know things from, from data. And so, you know, once you have that dashboard, that dashboard or that report, um, they can be lost, they can go out of date, they can break. And what you need is tools to kind of actively manage this entire life cycle of the artifact from exploration, sharing, updating, all the way through deprecation. And that's how you build this kind of organizational knowledge base. But a lot of tools, I think they just focus on one part of that life cycle and not really what it looks like end to end. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that at some point we actually get rid of old analytics? <laughs> yeah, we actually had a product idea that was like, automatically archive things that are more than three months old, but that one was uh, was did not make the cut. Well, I don't know. It sounds like it, if it hasn't been looked at, I, I, I might be in favor of that feature. I'd, I'd reconsider that on your roadmap personally. Yeah, yeah. There's several different concepts here that are kind of being rolled into one platform. I know that there's a huge conversation going on right now in general in the data space around bundling and unbundling, and you know that's kind of top of mind for a lot of people. So, I mean, Hex is obviously fairly heavily notebook inspired, um, but I also saw there's notions about lineage in there. There's some things around discovery. Um, so how do you think about the bundling and unbundling cycle? What's going on right now sort of with the explosion of tools being marketed to data teams, and, and how does Hex fit into that? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I think this explosion of tools has really been nothing but good for the industry overall. There's just so many good ideas out there these days, and people are finally getting the chance to kind of go out and build them and try them out. But it it absolutely comes at a cost because managing a lot of tools is really hard. And at Hex today, a lot of what we replaced are actually systems, homegrown systems with a bunch of different tools that are sort of stitched together in ways that they were never really meant to be. So I do think you will see some sort of consolidation around, particularly around sort of users and workflows, but that doesn't necessarily mean you kind of end up with this one size fits all mega data platform kind of situation. Because when you do that, you do lose a lot of the ability to support certain workflows really well. And you end up with sort of a, it does everything kind of okay solution. Um, and so, with, and this is fine for some teams, but it always leaves open these opportunities for really best-in-class products that target specific groups or, or workflows. I actually think you see this in a lot of industries, not just data. So I, we use Linear, for example, uh, internally. It's kind of taking on Atlassian and really doing one thing very well. And I think in practice, this is actually a lot of how innovation happens. And I don't really see that part slowing down. I, you, you raise a great point about the sort of, um, you know, sort of one size fits all covers a lot of bases, maybe not as deep versus sort of what you would call best of breed products. Um, a common topic that I've talked about with other folks on the show in the past has been the tool sets and the processes and the way that we work in data changing as the company evolves, right? So like maybe you're the first data person at a company of 25 people or 30 people or 50 people. The processes that you're going to go through, the way that you work is pretty different from a company of 500 or 5,000 is, do you view that, that preference for sort of one size fits all versus best of breed? Do you see that as a function of sort of maturity or does it depend on other factors? I think the way you see adoption happening happens very differently at a small company versus a large company. And so I do think small companies have a lot more of an opportunity to pick something that's a little bit newer, but is maybe better at the thing that they're trying to accomplish. Because, you know, if you have a team of a few data scientists, it's a lot less overhead to kind of just go and sign up for, for a new tool. Um, but I do think like as the modern data stack has matured, we at Hex have seen adoption of these 
different tools move more and more up market. They just have to be a little bit more established. They have to have all of their sort of enterprise features and security and all of that stuff in place and be able to do the kind of company wide top down sales, I guess, is the other is the other piece. So I don't I, I think it's harder to do the sort of like mix and match thing at a larger scale. But we are actually seeing as these products mature, we are actually seeing them move up market as well. Super interesting. I, I know that like at, when I was on the data platform team at Uber, this was always a question is like, well, we could go build it in-house and then it's sort of woven into that, you know, sort of other set of tools we have, or we can go buy that vendor solution and maybe it's, you know, more mature than we're going to get over the next six months or 12 months. But that comes at the cost of having to sort of integrate it to, you know, into all the other points where that workflow might have a touch point. So definitely have, have seen that before in practice. Yeah, I actually think you see a difference in generations of companies. It's really interesting because I do think companies like Uber and Airbnb and a lot of these folks, Facebook, um, built out a lot of this data infrastructure before there was anything off the shelf. But I think the next generation of companies that are that size will have had a lot of these tools from the very beginning. So I do think you'll see a lot of different and, and more sort of modern data stack type type setups, um, you know, three or five years down the line once you get, once they have time to kind of grow to that scale. That makes a lot of sense. Maybe uh, fairly related, but um, I wanted to ask, it, it seems like the lines between what you would call sort of traditional analytics around, so like, I'm going to do some analysis, I'm going to build a dashboard, there's going to be a report, um, and sort of these constantly online living data products where maybe it's a it's a dashboard that's updating itself every five minutes, or maybe it's even interactive or something like that. The, the lines between those things seem to be blurring a little bit. Um, as that line blurs, I imagine the role of a data scientist um, or an analyst is, is changing with it. What's your perspective on, on how that role is changing as the sort of tools and the way we expect data to work is changing? Yeah, um, well, I guess to start, I don't think data scientist is really a single role anymore, or I don't, I don't know if it ever was. Um, this is something we learned pretty early at Hex, actually. There's a pretty big difference between someone who spends most of their time doing kind of exploratory analysis versus someone who does, you know, most of their work is productionizing machine learning models or something like that. And we're honestly really excited about this trend at Hex because this is, we sort of made a bet on this, that there would be this like broad kind of variety of workflows. And we're building out this tool that supports, you know, not just a different, you know, sort of like a broad band of workflows, but also a pretty big spectrum of technicality, which is another thing that we're seeing in this space. You know, we, we talk about it as like, low floor, high ceiling, you know, it's easy to get into, but then relatively, like basically unlimited in, in what you can actually accomplish with that. And I do think one thing that you're seeing is that over time, you are seeing that analyst role in particular, which is sort of a subset of what would have traditionally been called a data scientist role, get more and more technical over time. You're seeing a lot more SQL and Python and code-driven workflows. You're, see, you're seeing software engineering best practices like testing and monitoring coming into these workflows. And this is where I think you do get a lot of that demand for more powerful data products from the analytics side. So, you know, really true data applications, not just sort of dashboards or decks or spreadsheets. And before, I think that might have been confined more to people on the software engineering side, um, but you're seeing that more and more come into the analytics space as well as people develop these, these skill sets that, that empower that. Totally agree. I see like a, a ton of movement in general amongst folks in data. And I mean, if you go back to like the roots, uh, a lot of folks that were kind of, if I think back to 2013 or 2012 or something like that, a lot of the folks that were sort of the early people on data teams were ex-physicists or people from econometrics or things like that. And so that software engineering skill set was softer. Um, and I, I definitely see a change in that over time is there's a lot of sort of software engineering skills coming directly into the data team. And, you know, of course, like no conversation about the space would be complete without bringing up DBT. And, and I think they're like one of the great examples of just the slow march of software engineering processes and tools into the into the data space. And I, I think that's a good trend. Uh, so, Caitlin, what uh, what else do you sort of see changing the most or sort of most dramatically for analytics and data science teams just broadly over, say, the next three to five years? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that we think a lot about here at Hex is how to increasingly expand the circle of people who can work with data. And I think a lot of people talk about this, but often I see it as like, oh, we're going to kind of for lack of a better word, dumb down the, the tooling so that it's like easier to learn and more friendly and more approachable. And I, I sort of, at Hex, we, we have this thing about like, 
yes, people can code. And the hardest thing about coding is actually not the coding itself. It's like everything around it. It's like, how do you install it? And how do you run it? And how do you like share it and collaborate on it? Um, and so I think one of the things that I see and that we see at Hex as being like this one of the biggest changes over time, and I was sort of alluding to this earlier, is that I think it's not just going to be that more and more people are working with data, but more and more people are able to come into tools like Hex and not just ask and answer questions of their data, but also interact with it at a much higher level of technicality and a higher level of power. And so what I think you'll really see is not just you know more and more people looking at data and doing point and click things, but actually really starting to acquire these, these technical skills, whether it's like learning a little bit of SQL over time and then being able to apply them and actually drive value in the organizations with tools like Hex. It's really just expanding access to data, like the very small targets sort of growing to the whole organization over time at the level of skill that that individual is comfortable with interacting with data. Is that, is that a good way to phrase yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Cool. And well, Caitlin, we can't let anybody off the show without three quick rapid fire questions. Uh, Easy first one is, are you on team R or team Python? Uh, Definitely, definitely Python. All right. Uh, Number two, what's one thing that people don't understand about notebooks that you wish that they did? I wish people, more people understood that the things that they think they dislike about notebooks aren't really inherent to notebooks. They're inherent to specific implementations of notebooks. I think notebooks themselves are a great tool and a great user experience, but I think there's just a lot more work and innovation to be done until they're sort of, they've worked out all of the kinks, let's say. Got it. This goes back to your your comment about the code's not the hard part. It's everything around it that makes it possible. Cool. Okay. And last one, would you rather fight one giant burrito or 100 tiny tacos? Am I allowed to ask how big the burrito is? It's big. It's really big. It's really big. Um, I think probably still the burrito. I kind of feel like it would be big and slow and easy to avoid where getting swarmed by a bunch of tiny tacos seems hard to uh, hard to deal with. I feel like there's a lesson about startup roadmaps here about tackling one big thing instead of 100 small things, but I'll leave that for another time. All right, Caitlin, well, thanks so much for being on the show. Really awesome to learn more about Hex and about the way that notebooks and data science are evolving in general. If you want to learn more about Hex, there's going to be a link uh, to their site in the description down below. Caitlin, thanks so much for being on the show today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. This was, this was really fun. Great. All right, thanks all. See you next time.